Hello everyone, today I'm going to be talking about some songs from the Netherlands in Eurovision. There are 28 of them which we will talk about today. Uh, we're starting from the year 1993 up until today. So if my math is correct, they've set out two times during these years. Um, there are seven categories. This is a normal tier list. You, sh you all know how it works by now. And we're going to start with the year of 1993, where the Netherlands um, sent a song called Vrede, I think. Um, which is, you know, quite a, a standout song to begin with, I think. This, is, this stands out. It has a lot of character, a lot of energy. It's quite fun. I think the performance is particularly great. I think the... Oh, I don't know her name, but the, the, the singer of this song has a great uh, charisma on stage. She's a very good performer. And the song also has like this upbeat hook that actually kind of sticks to my head a little bit. The backing track has um, attitude and a bit of energy and it's, it's quite nice. Um, but at the same time, now that I think more about the song, there is this section towards the end, uh, which I really don't like <laughs> very much. Um, I mean, it is from 1993, so you got to be, I guess you have to kind of, consider that these things might happen but there is a dance break section like a hip-hop inspired beat for a dance beat section towards the end which is just so out of place and sounds so outdated today which is a massive shame because that makes this song feel very um kind of restrained within its own time it's not it, it has it's impossible for this to become a timeless classic because of sections like that uh, which really holds this song back, I think. But still, like, the, the main performance of the song, I think, is strong enough. And the song has some great qualities in it as well. So I want to bump it up to solid, regardless of the section towards the end that I'm not a fan of. But I think solid would be a fair judgment for me personally at this point. Um, yeah, I think that's where I'll put it. Uh, in 1994, they have kind of, like, a complete opposite type of song. Um, it's called Varis the Son or something like that. Um, I quite like like the classical approach that this ballad has. It's a very ballad heavy year and this one comes after a lot of ballads. It's quite unfortunate because that always kind of lowers my opinion on it. Um, because it becomes a little bit of a filler if you watch the 1994 show in a row. Um, but I still think there are some qualities in the song which I quite like. Um, the melody is quite pleasant. The backing track has, as I said, this classical uh, instrumental approach, which is quite nice. It's staged quite nice as well. It's just solid, I think. Uh, I don't want to drag it further down than that, because I do like elements of this song enough to put it in this category, I think. Um, so yeah, that's where we're gonna land. Uh, and then I think... 1995, they said, oh yeah, 1996. This is a, a duet, which I... I don't really have much to say. It's it's all right. Um, I don't really think too much of it. Solid vocals, solid melody, solid. <laughs> there really isn't much more I think about it, to be honest. It's a very... <sighs> Do I really feel like maybe Netherlands has a tendency of sometimes just being a country that I don't really pay attention to? That sounds so harsh to say, but like in older years, I feel like that usually tended to happen. And this is one of those occasions, even though I quite liked the song, it just didn't really leave an impression on me, if I'm honest. Uh, 1997, this must be, didn't really leave too much of an impression either on me, uh, but this one has an identity, at least. Um, there is like this kind of, um, like there's a dramatic touch to it. It's very uh, heist-like in the, in the instrumental, I think. The, there's suspense and there's momentum being built in the backing track and the vocal arrangement is quite strong as well it's just it's kind of a it's a very engaging song high of energy and um a bit of fun in that sense and i like the the attempt of the choreography on stage as well uh it's a bit of fun not really too much else i don't think the melodic writing is very strong uh but the backing track has some you know it has energy so i, I kind of i boost it up a little bit for that and i say this is a solid effort as well and uh, I'm starting to see a pattern already with uh, Dutch entries in Eurovision. It's mostly just solid so far. But that will uh, absolutely change because in 1998, Himmel in Aarde or something like that, um, 
this is such a great pop song, from, especially from its time. It just has everything. A very memorable melody, a charismatic performance, which is just a lot of fun to watch. And the backing track just has so many great details throughout being scattered in there. The songwriting is superb. Um, I am tempted... Yeah, I'm going to put it... This is among the greatest for me. I think this is a very, very, very strong entry. Uh, and uh, a real standout for, for the Dutch. Um, just the performance adds so much to it. But the song that they have is already so perfected in its songwriting that I just love it. Um, it's just kind of just right in both terms of energy and kind of just laid back pop vibe. Um, it just works. I love the instrumental. I think the instrumentation is great. Um, just holds up really well today as well, I think. Yeah, among the greatest. I think there I have to put it up there because uh, that's what I feel. 99, uh, this is the song, what's it called? It's like One More Reason or something like that. This is so kind of anonymous to me. Uh, the hook is there, like it, it has a little bit of a memorable melody to it, but the rest of the song is just kind of flat, I think. I can't really put it higher than the I like it but category because I, I, I like the, the hook, it has something, but the rest of the song is just kind of meh. It's really all I have to say about it. It's um, quite sad, I guess. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't feel anything about this one. So sorry. Two thousand. It's kind of just continues going downwards here. I think this is uh, no goodbyes with the dramatic clothing reveal thingy where they pull off her dress and the dancers join out and it becomes like this upbeat pop anthem that I can't really get behind. It's simply not for me. Uh, it's too bouncy, too cheerful, and not really without... It's like kind of without a, a strong melody to it or a strong instrumental behind it. I just think it's happy for the sake of being happy, and it's focused too much on the gimmick of having this big dress and the reveal, um, instead of actually focusing on writing a pleasant listening experience for the latter half of the song, I think. Yeah, not for me. Simply not for me. Um, 2001, <laughs> this is cute, like, it, it's very relaxing and just a charming mood, um, I'm quite fond of that, but the song doesn't really have that ability to grab me, uh, I think the, the cozy atmosphere is really what they rely on, and it works, but I don't really think it works for three minutes, it needs to have some kind of elevation towards the end for me to really click with it, um, so I have to put it in this category, I think, because I like the whole atmosphere of it, but it doesn't really grab me for the final part of the song. I, I kind of get a bit... I start to zone out towards the end of the song, which is a shame, because I think there is something in here which I really like, but, um, yeah, uh, not quite there for me. Uh, 2003, One More Night, I think this one is called. I kind of mix up this one with this one very easily, I'm so sorry, but uh, this one has a better performance, I think. I think the charismatic performance is really what sells this one. The chorus is kind of catchy, I like the melody of it. I think the backing track has a lot of great energy to it as well. It's it's done with the right approach, uh, and the melody is quite strong. And I think the performance is what really sells it. Um, I think, I don't know her name again. <laughs> Uh, but I think she's a very good performer. So, solid. Yeah, that's where it's gonna land. And 2004, I am quite tempted to put in solid again. Um, yeah, this is, again, like with the 2001 effort, it's very cozy and just... feels like a warm hug, the whole song. Um, and I really like the input of the backing vocalist. I think that's the strongest part. The, the, the chorus is definitely uh, what's, what makes this song uh, worthwhile. Um, the verses aren't too interesting, but the chorus really just has that nice cohesion of, of the call-response technique in, in the vocal arrangement. And I'm liking the, the guitar pattern throughout the song as well. It's very campfire uh, esque which maybe isn't really too admirable or ambitious, but it just works in the setting of the song. And, at times you just want a song like this, and I like the fact that they're sitting down as well. It becomes so much more inviting and just kind of personal and intimate, which I like. Um, solid. 2005, oh, 
yeah. I don't know what this song is called, and um, I don't really remember how it goes either. I know it's a ballad, and I kind of have it in my head. Uh, it's kind of a bombastic backing track, but it's just not... It lacks memorability. Um, yeah, I like parts of it. I think it's kind of well performed and well executed like it it does what it wants to do it's just that the song isn't really quite there it's not it doesn't really carry an identity and it's not memorable enough so um just falls flat due to that i think have to put it down here uh and 2006 a man banda <laughs> this is such a weird like it doesn't sound like anything um uh, anything other than this song uh, and i like the energy of it a lot i kind of they're setting out to do what they're doing, uh, and it's admirable, and I quite enjoy it, but I enjoy it for 30 seconds. This song feels, literally feels like it's seven minutes long minimum. It just keeps repeating itself, going and going and going, and because of the energy is so constantly high, which is usually something that I really do enjoy, that they actually keep the energy up. But this song doesn't have enough variety going for it, or dynamics, to really kind of utilize uh, the energy that it has. Because it just feels like it's constantly on loop and that it never ends. Um, that's how I'm feeling about it. It's it's a shame because I do like the, the whole approach they have. But the song is just overbearing, I think. Um, I'm, I'm tempted to put it in this category, but I just think the song is such a chore to sit through that I'm going to put it down here. Uh, but there are things I like about it, but it's just, it's too much. It's too long. It's just keeps going and I I can't sit through all of it. So I kind of feel like I'm obliged to put it down here. Sorry. Uh, 2007, On Top of the World. What a, what do you call it, like a fall from grace? Like this, this song is so good and this one just doesn't have any of what made this so great. Uh, except it has her, which is, she is a great performer, but um, the song is just too uninteresting. The hook has something in it, like the melody is still has a, a way of actually imprinting itself in my head, but the rest of the song completely lacks um, identity. <sighs> yeah, it's an I like it, but because I think there's something in the performance, I like the orange color grading as well on stage, but uh, the overall song here is not really strong enough for me. Sorry. Uh, a song which I think is far better, though, and that I see no one ever talk about. It's My Heart Belongs to... Wait, what is it? My Heart Belongs to Me. Or your heart belongs to me. I don't. I don't remember the name of the song. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm starting to kind of uh, make my point invalid by just not knowing what the song is called. I think it's your heart belongs to me. Um, I think the song has great energy. The the percussion throughout is really uh, a lot of fun. There's a playfulness in the song. The performance isn't too outstanding. It's kind of became a little bit forgettable when you see it live. Um, but I think the song that's here. Has a great instrumentation, uh, has a lot of energy, a lot of drive, and I think the hook as well is quite strong. I'm gonna put it in really great because I'm feeling generous, but I really do enjoy this one. Um, I enjoy it a lot actually. Something that I don't enjoy, oh shine, jeez, what happened here? These middle-aged men in sparkling costumes and the lady with the DJ table I think it is, I never want to see or listen to this ever, so I I'm not very well read on it, uh, on what it actually is in this performance. I just think the song is... I mean, I get I get the intention, but it's... No, it's so clumsily put together. I can't like it. I can't. I get it that it could be like a guilty pleasure or something, but it's not for me. No, no, no. What happened there? And there, we're going to continue on the same trend. Shalali, shalala. This, ugh, oh, just... Whew. No, 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 no. This hook is so... Oh, it's so obnoxious. I, I want to get it out of my head forever. Uh, it's stuck in my head. Like, if I've heard just a clip of the song, two seconds of it at some point, or if I think about the song, the hook is stuck in my head and I hate it. Uh, and I completely despise the backing track as well. It's this carnival-esque type of music, uh, which is basically, it basically only exists to make you annoyed. So no, I never want to know of this song existence. Uh, sorry for being harsh, but I, I, I can't get behind it. I don't find any charm or any enjoyment in it. Uh, 2011, I believe this is their worst result ever. 
So I'm sorry about that, Netherlands, because it, I don't think it should be. Uh, the performance is a bit, or it's very on the meh side. But the song has something. I like the instrumentation. I think the vocal hook of the chorus is actually quite strong. It's mem it's a memorable hook, I think. Um, but it's just kind of falls flat when you see it live. It's not interesting enough. The song doesn't really have enough drive either. Uh, it's just that melodically, I think it's quite um, quite nice. So I'll put it in this category right here. I think it fits right well in there. Uh, 2012, You and Me... Probably something that should be in the same category, in all honesty. Um, well, this is not a good look for the Netherlands in Eurovision, I just realized. I have a lot of songs towards the bottom. Uh, but this one, it, it's alright, but I'm, I just can't really connect with it. Uh, and that's the main issue, I think. It's quite gimmicky with the... What do you call it? Like the... The hat? <laughs> <laughs> whatever you call it. I don't, I'm not a big fan of it. I like the like the instrumentation is quite nice with the guitar driven um, approach. Staging is all right. Um, it just kind of lacks that specific thing to really make me engaged into the song. Uh, I don't really find that. Even though it's quite cute and quite well put together, I just can't connect with it and it never really gets going. It doesn't have that drive uh, that I would have wanted. So now... We're gonna put it down here. Uh, and finally, uh, 2013, Anouk with Birds. This is just so well written. Uh, great chorus, lovely melody, really. And the backing track really fits the tone of the song. It establishes a specific setting right from the get-go. And uh, just the vocals combined with that backing track is so nice. Um, fantastic. This is really well executed. Beautiful staging, um, just kind of simplistic, but just, just works because everything has been perfected in it. Um, yeah, I think that's a fantastic effort. And I think we'll have another... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not overly sold on Calm After the Storm like a lot of people are, but I still think it's quite fantastic. The, the, the way it's presented in the TV screen is what probably pushes it over the line for me. It's so intimate. Um, it's like you're a fly on the wall between these two uh, artists with the camera just spinning around them constantly. And the song flows so pretty. Uh, it's very nice. I like the verses a lot, actually. The verses... Um, I mean, it's... I think it's kind of difficult to write verses that really leave an impression, but I think in this one, it just works. And I think they really rely on the duet concept to really um, hammer it home. The the personality of the verses um, because the chorus becomes the the do it section and the verses become the more personal sections for each for each singer it's just a really nice well written song uh, and the performance really just elevates it really has a great setting and a great atmosphere to it it's just really pleasant and I enjoy listening to it a lot um, yeah fantastic uh, 2015 walk along no not for me um, the hook is quite, it's too repetitive, it's just a why, 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 um, that I don't really enjoy, melodically very distant from being anything that's interesting to me. Performed, it's performed alright, but the song doesn't really have a, any type of chance to ever grab me as a listener. Uh, I zone out, and I think the hook becomes quite unbearable, uh, pretty fast. Sorry. Uh, 2016, Slow Down. I like this one, though. This is performed perfectly, I think. That's that's really what sells it. Um, the song has a nice instrumentation, and uh, I quite like the, the vocal style. I think the verses... I think this, the chorus might be the weakest part of the song, in all honesty. I think the verses are very pleasant to listen to, um, especially in combination with how the instrumental works. I like also how they're using different solos throughout to really just add more variety within the song. The guitar solo is a great section of the song that really just... It keeps... like the, the energy of the backing track keeps going and the guitar takes over. And it's a very uh, well-flowing section of the song as well. This song just does everything it wants to. Unfortunately, I think the hook is a bit on the weaker side, uh, but that's being matched up then by the fantastic performance. I just love the way they staged it. It feels so minimalistic 
which just works for a song like this perfectly. Um, I'd say really great on the verge of uh, almost being up in the fantastic category, but I think the hook is what really drags it down a little bit. Uh, I think it's a bit on the repetitive side, unfortunately. Uh, in 2017, uh, don't really remember the name of the song, but uh, vocally just flawless. I love the way they harmonize on top of each other. The performance is a bit empty, but they still have a lot of character and or charisma to really just shine through the, the screen, which pushes it over the line and kind of evens out any sh shortcomings of the stage being empty. Song doesn't interest me too much, in all honesty, but the vocal arrangement does. So, uh, really great. Yep. Um, hmm. 2018, uh, Outlaw In Them. Oh, I, I actually really like this one. Uh, I know this song has a lot of people who just can't really get behind it because it is this very typical, uh, what do you call it, uh, the country rock type of music. It's, I mean... I get that if you're not a fan of it, you're not a fan of it. And it's very um, gimmicky in that sense, I guess. Like, it's very predictable to the to the genre of music that it is. But I just get so much enjoyment out of it. I think the hook is really kind of infectious in both melody and the backing track. The backing track has a lot of drive, a lot of power. Love the guitars in it. The guitar riffs throughout the song are really, really great. I like the incorporation of the of the dancers it's kind of odd but it, it just works for me it's a part of the charm and i have a lot of fun with this one um i wouldn't turn it off at any time i just really enjoy watching it and i think the song just has that ton of drive that really uh, makes me enjoy it so much um i'm gonna put this in fantastic actually uh i have too much fun listening to this song honestly i get if you if you disagree with me on that one but it's completely fine uh but I have too much fun with it. Yeah. 2019 Arcade, uh, yeah, among the greatest for me personally. It's just so well written um, and incredibly well staged. I mean, you gotta say, it's. They really knew they had the song this year and they put everything into making the effort to win it. Um, first time I heard the song, it kind of blew me away with how well produced it was how great the sound design was. I love the switch in the first verse when the, like you, you introduce everything with the piano and the kind of drowned out, um, very tranquil soundstage. And this piercing guitar takes over. Uh, it's just one of those moments that actually gives me chills. The only thing that I kind of don't like about it is the fact that he pretends to play the piano when they do that switch. I, oh, it does my head in. I can't watch the performance without kind of just what do you call it? Grind my teeth at that? But it's fine. It's fine. I'm over it. Uh, it's such a small little detail anyway. But I just love that part in the backing, or like in the instrumental, when the when the instruments switch like that, because it's done with such kind of a heart-wrenching uh, tone in it. That guitar sounds fantastic, by the way, throughout this song. It's such a, you know, just a shivering guitar. It's with the bright sound. It's very hollow. Oh, I love it. And it just works in the atmosphere of the backing track as well. The The production quality is insane, honestly. And the final chorus has so much drive in it when the drumming really just kicks it up a notch and the strings come in. It's just one of those finales that really just ties everything into the bow. It, it ends just the way you wanted it to end, which I love. Yeah, very, very good. Very, 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 very good among the greatest. Uh, Grow. I like the fact that this is so personal, but the song doesn't quite really reach all the way for me. I think it ponders on a bit too long and doesn't really carry an elevation that makes me want to really, really enjoy it. Uh, vocally, I think it's quite strong. I like the vocal arrangement as well with the backing vocalists that join in. It's just that the song doesn't really take that final ele uh, elevation that I want it to have. So it doesn't quite evolve in into what I want it to be. But maybe it evolves into what he wanted it to be, or what they wanted it to be. I don't know. But for me as the audience, I'll put this in solid because I enjoy it, but it doesn't quite push it over the line for me. Mm. Uh, in comparison, I do prefer Birth of a New Age. I think this song has such a great hook. Um, and just the flow of the song throughout, honestly. Um, 
the verses are great um and the yunoma brokkumi part is so just has the ability to really imprint itself in my head i really like it uh, and i like the chanting type of vocal that really backs it up as well um and th the way the song just keeps progressing and throws uh previous like prior parts of the song into uh, new sections of the song as it progresses it's just really nice it's well detailed um has a great hook i'm also loving the playfulness of the arrangement both percussive wise and energy wise it's just one of these songs that kind of becomes like a journey because it takes different turns and you're not really sure where it wants to go and i really like that um really great well performed as well i really get the charm from the performance uh, i think it's a very unjustified uh, zero points from the televote but what can you do about it? I think it's a really great effort, nonetheless. I also think uh, the Dite is quite a great song. I love the guitar. Like, I love the sound of the guitar in the opening of the song. Um, the hook doesn't really grab me. Uh, it's a bit too one note. Um, not quite engaging enough melodically. Um, but it's still, you know, it has the backing track. There's a great tone in it. It's very well produced. Mm, I like the mixing work a lot. Yeah, it's it's really great because the performance is also quite strong. The the staging isn't too remarkable, but it's such it's still performed so well, the song. Like it's sung very well, the lighting is very pretty. And I think maybe I think it's the guitar arrangement that really pushes it over the line to the really great category, uh, regardless of the few complaints I have about the song. Um, so yeah, that's how I would rank the, uh, I believe it was 28 songs from the Netherlands in Eurovision from the year 1993 to 2022. Um, and possibly you completely disagree with my list and that's completely fine. But do tell me what you think is your, maybe your biggest discrepancy, uh, from my list to your list. Uh, or maybe you can tell me something that you, oh, I absolutely agree on this part. That's always nice to hear. <laughs> Something that people can agree on. Um, but yeah, that's the list for the Netherlands. Hope to see you in the next tier list as well, which uh, will be... Uh, I don't know my alphabet. Maybe North Macedonia could be up next. Uh, so hope to see you in that one. Take care of yourselves until, um, well, whenever I see you. And bye-bye. Uh,